It's so glad to be here again. You know, the last couple of times we've come, we've had such lively discussions and gotten into all kinds of things. And to me, that's what uh, it's all about: is just coming together with that real strong intention to get clear. You know, where two or more come together, the ego can't hide. And we were talking about that before dinner about how there's just something that takes place when you come together and with a real strong intention to get clear. And, and basically, my approach is that everyone has the truth inside, but it's just covered and buried with all these crazy false beliefs. And whenever we come together, we get a little more insight into attachments that we have or certain beliefs that are in there that we didn't weren't conscious of or whatever. And then it's a, the mirror of our mind gets a little clearer so that we can reflect the light into the world, be the light of the world. And so, I just want to again encourage everybody tonight that if there's, as we're going into things, if there's anything that comes up, an issue that you're dealing with, or if you're working with a particular lesson that seems to be perplexing or struggling, or um, questions about my own life or about Beverly's, um, they're all open game because, you know, I really feel like the, the whole point of the course is you can't just read it, and study it, and memorize it. We need to, be, we need to live it. And if there's parts of our lives that are, that are not in congruence with what the Course is teaching or, or whatever, it's helpful for, one, for all of us to kind of be aware of those things so we can have the mind shift and, and be a, a witness and a demonstration of the truth. And uh, so that's always, always real helpful. Again, I think maybe tonight what we'll start off with is I'll just go some of the basic metaphysics because I've just been over and over and over it, but it's like no matter what discussion we get into, it's nice to have some kind of a basic framework to kind of um, run our discussion through. I mean, that's kind of been my experience with the courses, is just learning the metaphysics very, very well, and then just kind of like as I'm going through my daily life, as I have upsets come up or whatever, we were talking about that too, just tracing it back through the metaphysics of the course. And Tom, or Mark was sharing going to work and having a situation and, and I mean that's the bread and butter of the course. It's, a, it's meant to be a very practicable, practical, applicable spirituality, which really all spiritualities at the core are meant to be applied. And um, I think basically uh, what I want to kind of come at the course tonight through is through a basic thing like the problem and the answer or the question and the solution, and kind of come at it from the, the point of view that the Course is basically saying that there's only one problem and there's only one solution, and there, there really is only one question that the mind the, ask, keeps asking over and over and over at a very deep level, who am I? It's like the ego asked the first question ever, there was no questions in heaven. There just was one that, and the, and the first question that was ever raised, and including, and that's, and there's, there's been an awful lot of questions <laughs> raised after this first question, but the first question that was raised was, who am I? You know, and it was the ego that asked it. Christ did not ask this question. <laughs> there's complete certainty in heaven. So every question that has come from that first question including all the questions about the, the professions that we seem to be in, about the world, about, you know, the atomic, subatomic levels, about, you know, science, philosophy, all the other questions are just stacks and stacks and stacks and layers and layers of questions on top of that first one. And in the deceived state, the mind is still asking that basic question, who am I? <laughs> the ego has got lots of answers, you know, you know you're a man or a woman. You're a, a son or a father or a brother or sister. You know, you're a husband or a wife. You're a construction worker. You're an engineer. You're a, you know, mathematician. You're a tennis player or tennis teacher. It's just the ego gives us lots of answers, you know, and it's kind of constantly in there saying, well, you're a combination. You're, you're this, 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 and this, you know. And underneath it all, the mind just isn't sure because it's still asking that, that central question, who am I? You know, identity seems to keep shifting and changing. Well, I was, I was a son. Now I'm a father, or now I'm a grandfather, or you know, just I was, I was a banker. Now I'm into this or that. It's just very unstable and shifting and everything. 
So I think what we'll do as we go into our discussion tonight is maybe we'll keep working it back down deeper and deeper into the mind to try to get at that, that central question of who am I and, what, and where are the answer, the, the experience of the answer is. Another thing about questions is um, basically the, the ego asks questions and the Course describes them as double questions. I don't know if any of you got to the part, it's, pretty, it's late in the text, where Jesus is talking about how every question asked within this world is a, is a double question. It's in the quiet, the quiet Answer section, page 533. And so I'll just read you a little bit of this, because really it's, you start to see that how are we going to come to an understanding of the answer if we can't even ask the right question? You know, if we're asking questions that are like nonsense questions, or kind of like questions that, that ask and answer in themselves, they've already got a built-in answer already in, that they really are like circular questions. They don't go anywhere. They just go in circles. And how are we ever going to get, get deeper? And this is what Jesus uh, has to say in that section. He says, all questions asked within this world are but a way of looking, not a question asked. A question asked in hate cannot be answered, because it is an, it is an answer in itself. A double question asks and answers, both, an, both attesting the same thing in different forms. The world asks but one question. It is this. Of these illusions, which of them is true? <laughs> which ones establish peace and offer joy and which can bring escape from all the pain of which this world is made whatever form the question takes its purpose is the same it asks but to establish sin is real and answers in the form of preference which sin do you prefer that is the one that you should choose the others are not true. It's giving, it's starting to give a sense. When we really start to pull this back to our daily lives, is it's kind of like that's what the dominant theme of our, our day is, you know. I mean, there's all these seeming situations in the menu of the world, you know. And, and Jesus is saying that they're illusions. And basically, it's like we spend a lot of time or a lot of frustration sometimes debating about, do I, well, do I want to go here to eat dinner or there? Do I want to call this person or not? Do I want to date this person or not? Do I want to buy this kind of car or not? Do I want to invest in this mutual market fund or do I want to invest in CDs? You know, it's like the, the, there's a lot of strain and energy put into, you know, which of these illusions, illusions is true? Which, which ones are the best? And what's underneath that is that the mind has, has, has a hierarchy of illusions. You know, it doesn't see that these are pro just projected images, you know, it's kind of got these images ranked. <laughs> these are my top illusions. I spend a lot of effort and energy pursuing and seeking those. Then there's the middle level. I'm indifferent about these illusions. Let people pursue them and say, well, I don't really care. I don't care about them. And then there's the negative ones, you know, that I spend my energy avoiding. I don't, I don't want to be around this person. I don't care if they're an illusion or not. You know, I don't like them. Or I don't like this kind of weather. If I have to move to Hawaii, I'm going to get away from this weather, you know, because Hawaii's got better weather. You know, you can see that, that there's kind of a hierarchy in there. And what he's saying in here is most of the questions that are asked during the day are just the, they're, they ask and they answer. Um, it's kind of like, that's where the preferences come in, you know. It's, it's like each person has this hierarchy and, it, and it's like everybody's got a, a version of the good life, you know. It can be different. I mean, for some people the good life can be extremely different from others because everybody's kind of got an unconscious sense of the good life. So he's starting to say now, you've got to really take a look at these questions that you're asking. Um, he continues on, he says, what can the body get that you would want the, the most of all? It is your servant and also your friend. But tell it what you want, and it will serve you lovingly and well. He's speaking very sarcastically here, because this is how the, the ego thinks. And this is not a question, for it tells you what you want and where to go for it. It leaves no room to question its beliefs, except that what it states takes question form. So in other words, um, 
in, in this world, it's been forgotten that we're spirit and that we're mind. And basically, in the deceased state, um, the ego is, came, is kind of saying, well, God made you a body very well. You know, already you've got a limit here. So you better make the best of it. You better go for all the gusto you've got because, you know, you're stuck. You're limited. You've already separated from the kingdom. You've thrown away your spiritual inheritance. You might as well just go for the gusto, eat, drink, and be merry, for you shall die. <laughs> and it's going to be over, so you might as well go for the gusto. You know. And it says, it's ego doesn't tell us that, that, that this aiming for the gusto, so to speak, and, and seeking, for, seeking for peace and happiness in the world is the last place that we could ever find it because the world was made as a smoke screen, so we wouldn't go back in our mind, in meditation, so to speak, and sink down inside to be with the Holy Spirit, where our true happiness and salvation resides. You know, the old Bible saying, the kingdom of heaven is within. And the ego says, no, it, it's without. <laughs> it's that codependent relationship, you know, it's like, go for the relationship, go for the possessions, go for the fame, go for the glory, you know, go for something out there. And we've had a lot of examples of people who have who have followed it all the way out. You know, I think extreme examples like maybe like Marilyn Monroe. All the money, all the fame, all the sex appeal, married to Joe DiMaggio and Arthur Miller. I mean, you know, you got a famous playwright and so That's right. You know, we have variations. But, you know, according to the world, it's kind of like, you know, fame, fortune, money, good looks, all those things that... that this billion dollar cosmetic industry is aimed at, you know, the, all the, the magazines to sell sex and so forth, and, and very sad, very, very sad, very depressed. And the Course kind of gives us the framework to say, ah, the ego's basic premise is seek and do not find, you know? <laughs> it's very different than the biblical, <laughs> seek and you shall find, but it's like seek and, and do not find. Keep putting the carrot out for us, and we keep looking for these satisfactions in form, and we keep asking these pseudo-questions. And he says, the pseudo-question has no answer. It dictates the answer even as it asks. Thus is all questioning within the world a form of propaganda for itself. Later he says, an honest question is a learning tool that asks for something that you do not know. It does not set conditions for a response, but merely asks what the response should be. But no one in a conflict state is free to ask this question, for he does not want an honest answer where the conflict ends. So that kind of gives us the springboard, you know. If we, if we use, kind of tie that framework into the metaphysics of the Course, is the very instant that this tiny, mad, ridiculous belief in separation you know, seem to be bought into by this powerful, powerful mind, the Holy Son of God. You know, getting such a powerful mind is such a teeny little ridiculous thought that you could separate from your Creator. Literally, that was the big bang in the mind. That's where the, all the guilt in the mind arose and everything. But the Course says that the answer was not given after it, it was given simultaneously, that the instant that the belief seemed to believe, be believed in, the Holy Spirit was given as an answer for it. So, the good news of the Course is basically saying that, that your only problem has been solved. It's already solved. That's, that's good to know. Because <laughs> at times it can seem like, oh, it seems like at times like it's still open to question whether this is solved or not, because of the feelings that are experienced. Um, and we might have addressed the, the, the great question that's asked all over the country, the number one question, you know, how could this happen in the first place, kind of a thing. <laughs> and Jesus uh, uh, answered Bill Thetford kind of early on in the text when he asked the question about, it's a good question, but, you know, you're looking for an answer in terms of history. You're looking for an answer in terms of the past. And he says, you can just note by your reactions, you know, and your feelings, that obviously you're still making the same mistake. And history wouldn't exist if you didn't keep making the same mistakes in the present. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's kind of like, oh, he just zooms back into the present. It's like the present moment is your point of power. That's where you make decisions, and that's where you can choose salvation. 
a lot of us, when we really do conceptualize ourselves as maybe we've been on a spiritual journey for a number of years and we're moving back towards our awareness of God and wholeness and completion. But Jesus goes even a step further in the Course. He says,